Hey everybody, David Henry here from LearnStageLighting.com. Welcome back to the 30 Days to Become a Lighting Ninja. I'm so excited, so pumped for this. I'm having so much fun with this. I hope you're really enjoying the videos as well as we take our journey through your show. Now, today it's the 27th of June, um, 2018, or if you're watching this later, then it's later. Um, but Today, we're kind of kicking off our, our last little segment that we, we started yesterday where I want to talk about and show you in the visualizer some tips for playing back your show. Now, this is not a complete guide to running lights live to music. However, I do have one of those inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs. It's called Puntastical, and uh, you can get more information on Learn Stage Lighting Labs here. So that'll be on the screen. That's not what I'm here to promote right now. Um, though, you know, that's what funds videos like this. Um, it's not the YouTube ad revenue, believe me. You can't uh, feed your kids off of that or even yourself. But regardless, YouTube is a great place and a great way to connect with you guys. And in this video, I wanna talk about being subtle, okay? So we all like to hit the end of a song. And, and one of my favorite things to do, you know, the band's riffing, you know, they hit the end of the song and the drummer's just smacking everything, you know, do, 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 do. And we like to do this with the lights. And I like to do this and it's a lot of fun and I enjoy it. And it creates a great impact on the audience and it looks great. And I always record this to a cue. But this only looks good when it's in contrast to other parts of the show. And so, you know, there's a line that, that sound guys use, and maybe you've done audio before, you've, you may have heard this line before, and they say, nobody goes home humming the kick drum. And their point is that you could spend hours working on your kick drum EQ, getting the mic placement super duper perfect, you know, messing around with it. But at the end of the day, that's, that's not what people are there to see. You want to do an excellent job, but don't over obsess about it. And with lighting, subtlety often wins as well and so say you're in a mid-tempo song okay because it's easy to talk about subtlety for a slow song but let's just throw ourselves into a mid-tempo song we're going to do violet uh green here and uh see so i'm just starting out say i just start this mid-tempo song with these violet backlights okay and, and my regular front light maybe i'll turn that to um eh, we'll turn that to cyan Oops, so back to violet green. Sorry about that. Press the wrong button there. And uh, take those, actually we'll take those to amber because that looks great with violet and green. And so this is your average mid-tempo song. And as a lighting person, I often feel the pressure, you know, to be doing something, to go, okay, okay, here we are, you know, everything's starting, you know, the song's starting, you know, maybe I go in and, and just start bringing in a little intensity chase, you know, maybe on, on these backlights here. You know, start bringing in some little intensity chase or or maybe I go ahead, you know, so I'm bringing this intensity chase across the rig, you know, something, you know, subtle, not too crazy. Bring up the front light so we can see it. And, and I feel like that's appropriate. But, you know, a lot of the times it's, it's really not. Um, and so this is kind of my point here is that, you know, subtlety really wins. And so say you're in this mid tempo song, you know feel free, especially if it's a band you don't know or or it's not your band, you know, during the, the verses, don't feel like you need to move stuff around all the time. You want to match the energy level of the band, but you don't want to overdo it. And when you are subtle, you know, then you could come in for the chorus maybe and, and bring in, you know, these lights with the purple ones, you know, you could do a chase back and forth on the chorus. You could bring in your third set of lights down here, oops, down here etc. You know, there's there's lots of different options um, as to how to, to build movement into your show without, you know, really being overbearing. And so that's kind of what I want to sprinkle on you guys today. Kind of the, the what I've learned over the years is, you know, when I started as a young lighting guy, and, and a lot of people do, you know, you go in and you just start, you know, changing gobos and gobos are great. And then, you know, you start moving stuff around, you know, all over the stage like this. And, you know, you do that for the verse and then you get to the chorus, you know, say it's a mid-tempo song and you're like, oh man, I got to top this now. Okay, well, I guess we'll bring in, you know, this crazy intensity chase, you know, on the chorus. And, you know, if you do that, throughout your show and you're you know you're going wild the the whole show 
you know, through the mid tempo songs, when you get to that peak of the night, when when you get to that that high tempo song, you don't have anywhere to go, right? It's it's kind of like in Spinal Tap, you know, these amps go up to 11, which is one more, so that if I'm at 10, I'm rocking away and I just need to go higher, I can go to 11, right? And so that's kind of what I want to uh, throw home here in this video is just don't be afraid to be subtle. In fact, sometimes the very best lighting is subtle. It's not overly showing, but it's just there to support the band on stage, um, whether it's a worship band or, or you know, a rock and roll band, a club band, jazz. Maybe it's not music. Maybe it's a theater show. But you can often make the most effective lighting by staying subtle, you know, doing interesting things, keeping, you know, interesting looks on stage, but keep it subtle. And then when those moments are there, for you to not be subtle, to really work off the energy of the band and create a high energy moment with them, then your lighting's really going to shine in that. That's something I like to call dynamic range. And it's just, you know, saying, hey, you know, maybe there's a slow song and, you know, you literally just go park it in blue and, and don't touch it all song. Then when they speed up, you know, and they do a higher energy song, it's going to look that much better. So that's the wisdom I want to uh, give to you guys today in your show. And if you haven't already, go ahead and grab our free guide, Four Things That You Need To Know Before You Buy Any Lighting Equipment. It's right here on the screen as well as below. And I want to get that in your hands to give you these tips. And also, I have a special discount in there for you guys on Learn Stage Lighting Labs, a way that, that you can get in and uh, check it out for a really low cost. And so, especially if you're catching this in June, it's a really, really low cost. If you catch it later than June, um, it'll still be a low cost to be able to check it out, see if, if it's a fit for you to get access to all that additional training and personalized input from me. So be sure to check that out. And I'll be back tomorrow talking about how to be prepared for anything. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.